What's up, gang? Welcome to another live. I appreciate you guys being here. Happy Monday. If you're off today, happy Labor Day. If you're not off today, I apologize, but hopefully you can catch this live um, on replay. So I need for you guys to put replay fam down in the comments below if you're catching this live on the replay. So today we're going to be actually talking about your first histology job. And before we get into that video uh, or into this live, I want to say your first histology job would definitely be um, <laughs> the most memorable. Trust me. And um, we all have our first and I decided to choose this topic for my live today because September the 11th marks my six year anniversary um, as being a histotech. So I thought this would be great because even though it's been six years, me being a histotech, I feel like it still feels like the first day or it will always feel like um, my first year sometimes my first month it just depends on how i'm feeling at that time so welcome to um you know your first histology job your expectations um, what to expect on your first histology job and we'll just go over some goals and what you know you may want to set for yourself in your first uh on your first job as a histotech so disclaimer i am uh you may hear some outside noise, so just bear with me um, because, you know, it's just one of those days. It's a busy holiday. And so, yeah, so let's just go ahead and get right into the live. And I do want to tell you guys that you guys can go ahead and start listing your questions or comments down below um, for the live. I'll answer those in the end like we normally do a Q&A at the end. But, um, yeah, we'll get to any Q and A's and what else? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the, into the live. If you guys are watching me on replay, make sure you comment replay fam. Welcome to the gang. If this is your first time watching my channel, um, welcome to my channel. I am the lab girl and I am a histotech. I've been a histotech coming on six years and I've been a travel histotech. I worked in um, Derm. I've done Mo's. Uh, you could just go back on my videos and I really just give you a general um, work experience of myself. And I am constantly learning new things. So this is the reason why I do these lives because I wanna let you guys know that I am just like you. It doesn't matter how long I've been a histotech, <laughs> some things I'm still learning as of today so welcome to the live i hope you find some valuable valuable information on this live all right so let's go ahead and get into the live video and let's go ahead and talk about your first histology job Okay, so your first histology job, what would that feel like? Your first histology job will definitely feel like a nervous wreck. You're going to have so many different emotions, highs, lows, good, bad, just traveling to work every single day. You know that there's expectations to be met at the lab, but also there's expectations that you want to meet for yourself. Um, one general piece of advice that I can definitely tell you guys um, is to make sure that you understand like I always tell you guys that you are new and allow yourself to be new so we'll get into that a little bit later in a segment that I want to start doing called lab talk so you are new you're new histotech what are your expectations and I'm just going to share my um, my experience as a histotech, I wanted to share with you guys how I felt and, um, you know, just as a new histotech, my first job and all the sacrifices that I made, um, as much as I can remember, as far as, you know, 
taking chances at my new at my first astrology job and actually being where I am today because I feel like honestly I wouldn't be where I'm where I'm at today if my first job didn't give me some type of obstacles and I probably wouldn't know how to navigate or troubleshoot or do things manually or just be in that realm of oh my god like all eyes are on me I'm new and I just want to make sure that I be the best histotech that I can possibly be but guess what I wasn't the best histotech that I can possibly be and that's the reason why I decided to make this uh make this live your first histology job all right so how did I feel about my first histology job my first histology job was a blessing um I think I probably I don't know looked for a job maybe I don't know maybe a couple of months and I got my first job I went on my interview and I worked in um, Lakeland Florida if you're from Florida and you know where Lakeland is at Lakeland is literally probably I want to say maybe an hour away from Orlando but I lived in Daytona so that was literally two hours away so for my first job I drove two hours away um, to this interview and I'm just thinking to myself okay like why would they hire me when I don't know anything? I don't know how to cut good. I don't know how to embed good. Like, what can I do to wow them to make sure that they hire me? That's normally the first thing I'm thinking as I'm preparing for an interview or trying to get a job. And that would be any job for that matter, not just the histology job. But um, if you go back to... Um, my other live I did interview tips and I show you guys or I give you guys some examples on what to say in your interview um, because it's how are you going to set yourself apart from the rest so that's really really important how are you setting your your how are you going to stand out when you are going into this field of experienced people and I think sometimes you, you're wondering like, oh my God, like I hope I'm getting hired with another histotech so we can both be new. But that's like very, very slim, especially if you're working at a smaller lab. But neither here or there. Um, I literally was excited. I got this opportunity to work at a histology lab. But I was thinking to myself, Shanika, how can I prepare? So the first thing I did is before I actually started at the lab, I went to um, Kaiser and I asked him, you know, hey, is there any way I can come and cut and embed practice? Because I want to feel confident as much as I possibly can to, you know, just to make sure that I have enough. Um, what's the word that I have enough? It's not even experience, but that I can feel confident cutting a block if they ask me to cut some sections on the block. Um, even though I was in school, I really feel like I just didn't get that amount of, you know, time to actually sit down in a microtone because class happens so fast to where, you know, if there's like 15 students in the class and, you know, you're cutting something that next, you, you have to give an opportunity to the next student to actually cut too. So I just feel like, you know, one day I may be doing the manual stain line and then the next day I may be, you know, doing my chronomy. But when you're not doing things consi um, consistently, it's kind of hard for you to feel confident going into an interview. And just in case they may ask you to cut a block. But once again, I didn't know what I knew now to where, you know, people will give you grace and knowing that, hey, I understand that she may not know how to cut the best sections or I understand that, you know, she may not be as um, fast or I understand that her sections may not hold up to our standard sections. But that's when your personality is going to make sure that you get the job. And, you know, those are the things that I didn't know until I actually like got my foot in the door. So. How did I feel about my first astrology job? I felt great. But when it was time to work, I was a nervous wreck. So let me tell you the positives 
of being at my first histology job. The positives would definitely have to be one, I got a job making $18 an hour. And that's a lot in Florida. And two, in 90 days, my supervisor told me I'll be making, I can, I'll get a raise in 90 days uh, up to $20 an hour. So that was like gold. I have struck gold. I'm making $20 an hour in Florida. My first histology job, I'm like, boom, good. The second positive thing was I asked, I was, whenever I was searching for a job, I knew I wasn't ready to be in a, like a, a fast paced histology environment because I wanted a place to where they would, like I said, have more patience with me and, and be able to teach me things and, you know, just have some type of um, a flow to where I, I didn't feel like that I was just being forced into anything. So that was a great that was the great thing about starting at that smaller lab. The block count for the day was around three to 400. And that was actually on a busy day. We had three histotechs. So we had my supervisor who was a histotech for like 20 something years. We had another histotech. Um, her name is Diana. And she had probably been a histotech at my job, maybe like 10 years or something like that but I think maybe overall she probably had been in histotech for probably like 20 something years as well and then you have me so that's three histotechs and then we had a lab aide which was this girl named Jackie and we had a cytotech and then we had um two other lab aides which would take over a sessioning and um getting the specimens ready for the grocer now that's how small it was and then we had two couriers who actually sat in the office like behind us so in the pathologists were on site and the pathologists actually owned the lab it was like three of them so it was a very intimate and small type of lab the good thing about that lab is number one like i said before the pay number two um the comfortability of me being somewhere where I actually had the opportunity to go at my pace to where it wasn't like everything was so rushed or people, you know, there was thousand blocks and, you know, it was just a nice, good, steady pace for me. The other thing that was good for me being a new histotech and on my first job was um, I had the opportunity to um, be taught frozen sections, which actually I didn't know anything about frozen. I remember having a cryostat in our lab at school, but what's, what are the chances that, you know, a new student will be taught frozen sections at a job? So that was another great thing that I was able to do. And I learned frozen sections using hot dog weenies. So that's a key. If so, if you, if you guys are ever um, in a lab and they, you know, want to give you the opportunity to learn frozen sections and you don't have any spare tissue to cut, then using weenies, there's like the cheap Dollar Tree or some cheap hot dog weenies, they literally section easy like, you know, a piece of like, like a fresh specimen. So that's major key that I'm giving you guys. And the there are several people that I've taught frozen sections to and I always bring out the hot dog weenies because that's just a good way for you to learn. Um, so those were the three great opportunities that I got to or four great opportunities that I got to experience on my first job. Now, the flip side of that was what I didn't get to experience on my first histology job. And I say this because where I work currently now, I feel like new histotechs really have a great advantage, more of an advantage that I know that I had as a student, especially in Florida, where it's very oversaturated with histotechs because Kaiser University and probably some now some online programs, they're constantly pushing out histotechs and the market is very saturated to where you're literally competing against your classmate. I mean, probably at the same hospital. 
So where I'm currently working at now, I just feel like if I was a student and if you guys are watching me and you are a a student and you're about to, you know, get your first histology job or you're studying for your test and you're about to, you know, sooner or later get your first job. I just know that the lab dynamics are different, especially in other states. Um, I just see in Florida is more of a hustle mentality to where it's like, you know, I don't feel like it's as easy to get a histology job. But I mean, I truly don't know because I haven't applied for a job in Florida. So I guess maybe, you know, you guys let me know if you are in Florida and um, it was just easy for you to get a job because there's just so much competition. But as far as, you know, what I see now, I mean, when they're hiring two to three histotechs at one time. And then there's so many blocks to where you have the opportunity to be able to cut. You have the opportunity to be able to embed. You have the opportunity to be able to cut some controls. You, you have the opportunity just to rotate around the lab to get a feel of each, um, not department, but just get a, just so you can get your feet wet and doing different things. I feel like that's definitely a great opportunity that's, um, that's awarded to new histotechs. Now, going back to my situation as my at my first histology job, um, the negatives of my first histology job will actually have to be because, number one, my job was from like eight to five, um, Monday through Friday, which is great. But by the time I get to work at 8 a.m., the main blocks are already cut when you have like two to 300 blocks a day. I mean, histotechs that have, you know, been a histotech for what, 20 plus years in the game, they can cut those blocks in about two hours and already, you know, they're already being stained. And normally by the time I get in, I'm picking up literally maybe if there are some recuts or maybe some special requests as far as, um, IHCs or immunos or um, you know just those type of things and then um, also it didn't allow me enough practice to be able to embed the important pieces of tissue um, they really couldn't hold any tissue for me because if I come in at eight and you know it, they start in at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning because the pathologists are coming in around, you know, 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning, those, you know, those blocks need or those slides need to be cut by the time the pathologist would get in. And, you know, I wouldn't be able to actually embed. So that was one thing that really hindered me. I wasn't able to actually embed. Now, some mornings whenever I would come in and just say there were still blocks to be cut because we had a busy day of 500 and maybe my my supervisor was actually doing office work and actually not cutting and I would come in and start cutting it would get a little complicated because when you're not doing things repetitiously it you start to forget and you have to be reminded every single time you sit down like oh my god okay now what what do I do again because I'm never here because I'm never here so it would be certain levels that would go on certain biop or certain slides it would be um certain certain tissue that will automatically have a an immuno attached to it so something will already have an ae13 attached to it or something will already have a pasd or it would or pas or and you would actually have to know what goes along with each specimen and it would just be to the point to where like i would just be left in the afternoon maybe just doing frozen sections or i would be left with just loading um immunos or ihcs for a lot of breast panels and things of that nature that the doctors would actually um submit to us um so it was a lot of things i was sacrificing i didn't really feel confident in the area of embedding i didn't really feel confident in the area of cutting but um, I did feel confident in the area of doing frozen sections. And now that I look back at it, honestly, 
in order for you to be able to provide a frozen section, I think that's what actually made me win in that situation because every histotech don't feel confident doing a frozen section. Every histotech have not been, you know, haven't been able to provide frozen sections for a pathologist. Just being in a path in a room with the pathologist one on one. I mean, it was like four or five different pathologists I had to go on site with and cut the frozen section the way that they liked it and watch them render a diagnosis, wait for if there was a positive margin, sit there and wait for that. If you guys would know the stress level on that, it would just be like, okay, the tissue would come in, the surgeon would come in, talk to the pathologist. They hand me the specimen. I need to quickly fix it and get it ready to cut it. You know, and not even thinking about all the mistakes that can happen. What if the tissue chuck out? What if the tissue isn't frozen good enough? What if um, I don't get a good section? Or what if the pathologist is just like, you know what, Shnika, this this sucks. Um, or I need to go deeper. I'm not going deep enough. Or I, It's just a lot of different stress factors why you have a doctor right there in the room with you waiting for, you know, to, to, to read your slide. So I think I became more comfortable in that realm of getting to know different pathologists. And I think that's what really showed me that going forward, no matter if, you know, if I'm in a room with a doctor or if I'm on the phone with a doctor or how to be confident and not thinking like, oh, you know, they don't care about me or, you know, or I'm just a histotech and he's just a doctor. I've learned that the pathologists are just as cool, you know, and, and you don't have to be afraid to to speak up or talk to them or have a conversation with them or or get to know them or see what they like or crack a joke or when to be serious. Or, I had to learn all those things in my first job. And that's where my personality came in. The skill lacked in other areas but my personality came in so while I bring up the second uh topic of you know my first histology um job be sure if you guys are watching this be sure to thumbs up this live so YouTube knows that you are enjoying this content and that I'm providing valuable content for you guys and if you're watching this live again on the replay just make sure you type in replay fam in the comments and yeah let's go ahead and get into um some other good things about your first histology job so let's see here Okay, now taking chances as a new histotech. Now, whenever I'm talking to you guys, it may seem as if like, okay, Shanika has it all together with histology. She knows a lot. But if you guys know me in real life, like honestly, like you guys know that I don't have it all together all the time. And I have my moments just like you guys are definitely going to have your moments and this is something that I have dreamed of and now I'm doing it. So that is what makes me even more excited about sharing my experiences with you guys. And that's what makes me even more excited about being motivated with doing histology and motivating you guys as well as you guys partaking in, you know, my videos and watching me and telling me, you know, how much you love my content that motivates me as well. So this is the reason why I do this um, because I was once in your shoes as a new histotech and I'm, I currently go in and out in your shoes as well um, as being a, a new histotech because as a traveler, I was new, um, starting a new job, I was new, learning new things, special stains, anything that goes along in the lab, you know, Moe's, Frozen's. Uh, anything that goes along in the lab, you, when you're learning things new, that is me as well. I don't take any of that for granted. So I definitely know and I can resonate and I can relate on how you guys feel. So 
let's talk about taking chances as a new histotech. So taking chances, why I decided to leave my first histology job, why I decided to take a chance and why I always advise, you know, you as a histotech to take a chance because me being in this game for six years, I'm still a baby in this. It doesn't matter. Six years may feel like a long time, but it's really not a long time. When you are working with histotechs who have been histotechs, you know, for 15 or 10 to 15 plus years, and, you know, you are still considered like brand new. And I was just thinking back, like, okay, I literally took a chance and left my first job. Mind you, by the time I left, I was making 20 I had got my raise to $20 an hour. I had a great supervisor. She was super nice. Um, I had conquered Frozen's and, you know, I was living, I was making more money than I've ever made at that time. And I was just in a, you know, a good space. But it was just something that was that was missing for me. And I was there for 10 months. And when I started to look at, okay, if I am truly going to elevate, not elevate to impress or, or elevate to move up in the lab, but it was just more about elevating myself. If I was going to elevate my, to elevate my career, right? This is before YouTube. This was before, you know, people really didn't know what a histotech was. Like no one knew what I did. No one cared about what I did. Like it was just more about, okay, how am I going to maximize my career? How I'm going to maximize my potential, right? So one day, I was like, yo, like I need, I need to find another job. Like I need to apply for another job. I know I've been here for 10 months, but I was like, I'm not cutting. I'm not embedding. Like, I don't know how, I didn't even know how to embed derm. I was just like, yo, like I can't not know how to do things. Like I can't just be comfortable because people are nice here and, you know, and I'm grateful for that. And, you know, I have a, a good little sweet job. I was like, but I have to grow. And this is the reason why I'm making this topic, taking chances as a new histotech. So one day I was like, you know what? I live in Daytona, but I'm working an hour and a half, two hours away. I was like, I'm going to start applying for jobs. So I started applying for jobs. It wasn't that many. Let me just make sure I make that clear. It was not that many jobs for me to apply to. Either you work at the main hospital or there was like a few labs in your area. You guys probably can relate wherever you guys live. But um, I honestly see more jobs on ND now than I did see. Did I um, honestly see more jobs on ND now based upon what I seen three years ago? or six years ago. So I literally say, you know what? I need to find a job. I started applying for jobs. And then I got a call back from a derm lab. So you, you guys know my crazy stories. Whenever I talk about my crazy stories, that is my second job, which my, my crazy ass boss. And he's hella crazy and everybody knows he's crazy. So um, yeah, he literally, he he interviewed me. And I remember I showed up to the interview. Well, before I showed up to the interview, he called me and I was thinking about traveling and I was about to take a travel um, job, but I really did not want to take a travel job just yet. Cause I had only been in the game for 10 months. I just felt like I just need a little bit more experience before I go. And these people labs fucking up their tissue. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Let me get a little bit more experience before I decide to travel. So I remember getting an interview and I talked to him on the phone and I was like, you know what? I'm looking for another job because I want to grow. I want to do more. He's like, you know, have you ever, you know, did Durham? I'm like, I do Durham here, but I just don't have enough practice. 
But once again, I said, but I'm pretty sure, you know, if you give me a chance, I'm pretty sure that I can conquer it. And, you know, I just need a little bit more practice and I need some more. I need I need a better opportunity to grow. I was just honest because that's the only thing I can really be because, you know, people want to know why you're leaving one job for another da 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 and, you know, all that. So I was just literally up front. And so I had an interview and I went to the interview, you guys, and no lie, he forgot about my interview. So I was waiting at his office and he honestly forgot about my interview. So I called him and I'm like, you know, Jason, his name was Jason. I was like, Jason, hi, you know, I'm here waiting. He was like, oh my gosh, Shanika. He's like, I'm so sorry. Mind you, I know he was a psychopath, but <laughs> he was just like, I'm so sorry. And, you know, let's reschedule the interview. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So we rescheduled the interview. And as soon as I walked into his other office, cause it wasn't the office that I was going to be working with. And so as soon as I walked into this other office, he literally gave me a gift card for a hundred dollars because he wasted my time. I'm thinking like, damn, like, okay, this is the type of boss I need. You're about to give me a hundred dollars. You know, okay, you, you, you give me money already. So let me put you guys up on game. So he asked me, you know, what are you making there? So I was making, remember I told you guys I was making $20, $20 an hour. So I told him, I was like, you know what I'm making? I just went up a dollar. I was like, I'm making $21 an hour. And he was like, okay. He's like, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give you an extra dollar. I'm going to pay you 22. I'm like, great. So interview went good. And I started working at my derm lab. Now, the positives of that taking that chance was I was able to be in a crazy environment, but it really taught me how to be self-sufficient. It really taught me how to um, troubleshoot. It taught me how to um, do things on my own, how to have patience how to train others and if I need to train someone because it just taught me a lot of different things. But it taught me how to just be confident in myself and knowing that if someone was to give me an opportunity to elevate or advance myself and when I got to my my last job, that's exactly what I did. I elevated and I advanced myself and I did it to the point to where I was the one that he depended on to make sure that his lab ran smoothly and shout out to my girl amy um we both did that so it was it was just i conquered what i set out to do and that's why i'm telling you guys that things may look a little um rough at first and you may think like oh my god this is my first job but you know i don't want to quit i want to give it some time that's good and that's and that's what you should do but whenever you look back and you given some time to things and you just feel like that you are not growing or if you feel like you know you just need some more if you if you asking if you're asking if you're asking can i do this can i do that and then you just don't get that you just don't get that provided to you i mean unfortunately it goes both ways because you need to invest in yourself and make sure that you get the proper hands-on experience you, you need to make sure that you get that hands-on experience to make sure that you are um that you are efficient and that and that's for you because whether you're at one job or whether you go to the next job what are you taking to your next job you know what i'm saying like what are you bringing to that lab because when you get to that lab what are you bringing there so that's going to go into my lab talk what are you bringing to that lab? So whenever I left my first job, I brought the experience with Moe's. I mean, I bought the experience with Frozen's. Now, mind you, I never even knew what Moe's was. So because I had that experience doing Frozen's, that led to him hiring me because he's like, okay, if she got the concept of Frozen's, I'm pretty sure she can get the, com the concept of Moe's. It was just a different setup of between Moe's and Frozen's. And, but 
the fact that I had that is probably the reason going forward now that one of the reasons I'm just going to say one of the reasons why I'm doing neuropath because I have that experience doing frozen and Mo's. So now I know how to cut a muscle, you know, so it's like that one little thing could be that 1% chance as to why, you know what? Hey, like it's not something that you have to teach me because you have to teach me everything else. Yes, of course. But the cryostat is home for me. Like you can put something in the cryostat and it's like, okay, like it's, it's like riding a bicycle again. And that's exactly what I think about. I'm in a totally different element. I work, I've worked on a cryostat for like two years before I became a traveler. So it's just one of those things to where it's like, if you don't use it, you lose it. But when it came to, you know, Moe's frozen and now I'm doing, I'm cutting, you know, muscle tissue in a cryostat, it was sort of like, okay, boom, that's the most familiar to me. So, you know, lab talk, real quick what are you taking to the lab what what is the what are you bringing so i brought that element of yeah i don't know how i really do derm like that yeah i've never cut um cut derm tissue or cut derm tissue every single day all day no i never done mose but if you show me just that boom like i know i can do it and once again, like it took me a few months to get the hang of things because every lab is different, of course, but I ended up doing Frozen's, doing Moe's, going to um, a Moe's conference. Um, it was just like the best thing like that I could have done for my career. And then that helped me transition into traveling, which by the way, I didn't do Moe's or Frozen's or anything with traveling I literally when you go when you become a traveler you literally just do what's expected you know what they need you to do it was just basic general cutting and embedding but it allowed me to perform at a different level because I have this other background you know that I can bring to the table and a lot of people can't sit down and say hey I've done you know I worked in all derm lab we perform surgery two to three times a week I mean, we used to have like over 30 something patients in the derm lab. Um, I used to have like maybe 10 to 15 mows scheduled or, you know, frozen sections scheduled twice a week. Um, I went to a conference in Chicago for mows. Um, like it was just like all these things that I can bring to the table. Now I can bring how much I was a traveler for, you know, a year and a half. Um, now I do, you know, now I'm learning neuropath. Um, I know how to, I'm efficient in this, that, and the third. So it's all about not just someone training you, but it's also about once you're done training. Yeah, adding it to, we're not even talking about adding it to your resume because that's just general, that's just general things that we know we're going to do. But we're just talking about the, the level of confidence and the level of, um, the level of confidence that you'll have as a histotech and the level of experience that you'll have and you'll gain for yourself. So picture day one, whenever I became a histotech, I didn't have any of that confidence, any of that confidence. And, you know, today I just look back like, damn, like I remember when I can barely fucking in bed. Some days I still have those days where I can barely fucking in bed. Trust me that my bed is shaky now, but... <laughs> but I rather you know I, it's just what it is but just I've still leveled up in some other aspects of my histotech career and I can only you know thank myself and thank you know myself for wanting more and to want to just not stay stagnant or just be like okay like I'm the best and better in the lab so you know I'm just going to just be that no I want to be more but I didn't have to I made sure I was very calculated on what I need to do. And sometimes, honestly, opportunities just really just came to me. So it wasn't about doing things to impress others. And it wasn't about just doing things um, to make me look better than someone or because I'm not really pressed about anybody else. It's more about doing things to make sure that I'm a better histotep and that I come on here and be transparent with you guys um, so you can be that 
same type of histotech, of course, in your own way, but just just to carry those type of values where it doesn't matter what the next person is doing. It doesn't matter what someone else expects of you. That's the whole thing. The expectation. It does not matter. Hey, Jelly Me Uber. Um, but it does not matter exactly, um, you know, what anyone's else expectation of you is. It matters what your expectation of yourself is. And even as a histotech for six years, September the 11th, it's always going to be about what are my expectations of myself. So we'll get into um, Q&A's. Um, you guys want to go ahead and submit any questions or comments. If you guys are watching on the replay, I know it's a holiday. So I know you guys probably are busy. Uh, or just chilling and relaxing like me and I'm just like you know what how, how about I go live but um, we're 40 minutes into the live and I'm not going to hold you but um, drop any comments you want to I'm going to open up the the Q&A uh, it's Q&A time I'm actually going to read uh, a Q&A for you guys or a question that I had gotten um, but yeah I know it's a holiday, so you guys are with your family, friends, or just chilling or sleeping, whatever you need to do. And you're welcome. I'm so glad that you was able to join the live if you're still in here. And um, you guys make sure to check out my last video, which was I just posted a few days ago, which was about Lab CE. I need to post part two, but LabCE.com is bomb. Like. You guys can thank me later because, yo, like using Lab CE will be the best way for you to renew your CEUs. And I'm definitely going to touch more on CEUs. Um, I'll be waiting to the last minute, like I said, to do my CEUs. But if you guys are now starting to take your CEUs, which is your continuing education credits, if you guys, you know, are going to be doing that in the next like three years, or if you have a state license in Florida and you're watching me, that's every two years. Definitely check out Lab CE. You will have um, a. It's just an easier format to do your CEUs there, and then you could just go to ASCP and update your credit. So once I learn how to do the split screen thing, then I will definitely show you guys, um, you know, how to do that. But check out that video. I'll be posting part two sometime in the next um, day or so. And let me just go ahead and get a question for the Q and A. And like I said before, if you guys got any questions, then you know just go ahead and type it down below and hold on one moment let me get that up for you guys okay all right so i got a question from saki or comment from saki kid um, she put, I'm so happy I stumbled on your videos question about the board certification and traveling. Did you have to get recertified in California? All right. And no, I did not have to get recertified in California. Um, I did see where I guess California has a state license, but it's not like Florida or, um, Nevada or New York. Now the difference is, let me see. I can explain this. Okay. Whenever you work in those states, Florida, Nevada, and New York, you have to hold a board certification, which is your ASCP. But in order to work in, in Florida or Nevada or New York, you actually have to hold a state license. And because I think it has something to do with malpractice or things of that nature. But what happens is whenever you are a histotech in some of these other states, they can literally take a histotech uh, they can literally take a, any person off the street and train them as a histotech and pay them whatever amount of money they want to pay. Normally like the lowest wages. So just say you, you'll get paid like maybe $15 an hour to be a histotech because these other states don't need a state license. So if you live in, let's just say Alabama and um, they're saying they're hiring for a histotech. Um, you literally can get a job in Alabama as a histotech and only be um, getting paid like $15 an hour. So 
that's the reason why Florida and Nevada and New York, they actually have one of the reasons why they actually have state licenses, because it goes along with board certification. And then I think the ones with the state license, um, you don't need to be board certified. So when I was in Nevada, I won't say the hospital, but it's not really that many hospitals. But when I was in Nevada, it was lab tech who were cutting and they wasn't even board certified and not because they wasn't board certified because they, they was going to get board certified later or they have finished the histo tech program or anything like that it was just the fact that they had they have some type of license in nevada to where you can actually cut as a lab tech and not be you know licensed it was kind of weird at first because whenever I started, um, this guy would cut beside me and another histotech. I'm like, they just be letting lab techs just cut like that. And not just because, and I don't mean that loosely. I mean, it like, you know, it's not like he wasn't becoming a histotech. He didn't have no, he never been in the program. He wasn't scheduled to take his, you know, he didn't even have his bachelor's. That's the difference. Like he didn't, he wasn't eligible for route one or route two. It was just like, oh, you know, we need some help. So here go to lab tech. He can just cut. And of course he knew how to cut, but he really didn't take any pride in anything because it was sort of like he was and he was cutting and not even getting paid what a histotech would get paid. So that's the that's the reason why it's important for you to be board certified. And that's why everyone can't be a histotech. And that's why everyone can't just cut off the street, especially when you in those states, uh, especially in Florida. Florida's not gonna let your ass cut, period, unless you have a license. So they're not playing that. But um yeah, so I didn't have to get certified for um, California, but, but you do need a board certification to travel. Um, there may be one or two places you can go uh, who will hire you if you're not licensed, if you are going to be a traveler. But like I said, the guy had got a job, I think, maybe as a histotech and he wasn't licensed or nothing and have a no no schooling, just only he worked in a lab and he was cutting but he ended up quitting it, but I'm pretty sure he didn't get paid any good money for that. So I would just definitely tell you, if you are going to be a histotech, go ahead and get licensed, get your sciences, whatever you need to get and get that money. Um, let me see. Okay. And she, another person, um, Ren Michelle put how much do people in your field make? And like I always tell you guys, it really depends on how much you're going to make. I'm pretty sure I have a V on my channel. How much do histotechs make or how much do travel histologists make? It always depends on the city or the state. It depends on, uh, you know, if you work, it, you know, your experience. It depends on um, a lot of things, just like any job, I would probably say. But, you know, as far as histotechs, maybe I would definitely tell you the lowest, maybe 35,000 up to 100,000 but always factor in your experience and always factor in which one you're going to be some jobs have histotech one histo two histo three different levels of histo um that's another thing to factor in and factor in what would you what would you want to get paid if you know you've been a histotech for five plus years well, you're not trying to pay me no 20 something dollars. I know that. I know that for a fact. And, you know, if you've been in histotech for 10 years, you know, I'm not trying to get paid no 30 something dollars either. So it's just like, you know, you but it's cost of living, things of that nature. So I never try to rule out anything when it comes to pay because someone in New York would be like, well, I make I make 50 dollars an hour. And then you're living somewhere like in. Texas and you're making and y'all been to histotech the same amount of time and you live in Texas and what if, and what if or let me just say Georgia you live in Georgia and you're probably getting paid thirty dollars an hour but someone in New York is getting paid sixty dollars an hour well just factor that in so never let anyone make you feel as if you're not getting paid enough and that's not what you should be making because story time I had this one girl who I really don't consider her you know a friend anymore but she used to always press me about how much I made in Florida and made me feel like it just wasn't enough and she lived in you know a different state and I was just like bro I'm never telling you how much I make so you can just calm down
But yeah, don't don't be discouraged about how much you make against anyone else because you know in due time you'll be making more money. And last but not least, my last comment or question, you guys, I'm going to be in the live soon. Um, if you're watching this on a replay again, re replay fam down in the chat and I will be going live, getting back on a normal schedule again. I promise you guys. So I won't just do an impromptu live with you guys because I'm always just like one day is Sunday, one day is Saturday. Today's Monday. I am so sorry. <laughs> um okay this is the last comment from shanty valerie shout out to you guys for submitting questions to me comments i really appreciate it um hello my name is shanty from houston i currently work in the mo's medical uh i currently work in mo's as a medical assistant i'm studying for the ASCP to become a histology technician I was trying to find out, does it make a difference if I use the Frida Carson 3rd edition or do I need the most recent edition, which is the 5th edition? And do I get the workbook that goes with the 5th edition or the BOC 2nd edition? So that was a lot. Shanti. Shanti. Um, thank you so much for your question. And really, I mean, honestly, you guys, whatever edition I would definitely tell you is, is okay. Um if you already have the third edition or in the books, because in my opinion, I think either edition will help you. Um, but if you haven't bought a book or anything, you can definitely go ahead and probably buy the newest edition. I always tell you guys that um, I really feel like they're all the same thing. Long as free, it's Frida, who's, you know, the author of the book anyway. And I am going to keep my word and actually buy the newest edition. So that way I can see exactly what is the difference um, with the books. But uh, she did reply back to me. She says, my coworker let me use her third edition. I was just making sure that wasn't too old. Um, but I don't think it's too old. I still have the old book. I think it's the third edition as well. Like I show you guys all the time. Frida's your mom. You guys know that. Frida's your mama up in here. So, yeah, I don't think any. I don't, I don't think that's too old for you guys. So whatever edition that you guys have. Just one more thing. Add lab CE to your studying. Make sure you add lab CE to your studying because lab CE has um, those practice questions. And if you got those practice questions, like the little stimulators, which I saw on the website, then that definitely will help you as far as quizzes. Um, I'll be including some of those quiz questions on um, my videos um, or you know whenever I can but lab CE will be your best friend I swear to you guys I am so sorry that I left out lab CE when studying was happening and I always said free to your mom the workbook that's all you need that's true but those quizzes on lab CE pay, if you got the extra money pay for those I'm not really sure how much they cost they're, pro they're under they're probably under $50, but it would definitely benefit you um, in the end. So apply those questions in your rotation of studying and um, you guys will be great. So that's it for the guys you live. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me. If you guys are catching this at the end of this live, I know this is very impromptu. I just did a QA. and a um, any question that you guys may have, definitely feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. So that way, whenever I go live next week, we can go ahead and review those and make sure you press, uh, make sure you put replay fam in the video. And once again, do not forget to join the gang, um, subscribe to the channel. We are on a, the road to a thousand subscribers. You guys, I love you guys. You guys are the gang. We are we're about to hit a thousand y'all so let's go ahead and get up to a thousand so that way you know we can get that community tab popping so you guys know exactly when i'm posting and i can leave you guys you know with little comments here and there so i hope you guys have a wonderful week and yeah i will see you guys in my next live and don't forget to join the gang bye <laughs>